Hello, continuing our reading in Poppy and Rye by Avi. This time is chapter 14, Aerith. Aerith ran along among the trees, heart pounding, quills rattling. He tried every dodge he knew to escape, as if some great beast were pursuing him, though this beast was his own feelings. He climbed trees, he threw himself behind bushes, it made no difference. He still felt miserable. When he found an old hollow log, he plunged into it. There, surrounded by the stench of pulpy rot and moldering fungus, he hunkered down and stared out at the rain but found no relief. Never had he felt so miserable. Gradually the storm subsided, the rain ceased, water dripped. A gray mist, clinging to the earth, slithered through the dark trees like forbidden thoughts. Aerith crawled out of the log and shook himself. Take hold of yourself, he muttered. He headed back to the ridge in search of the cottonwood tree he had climbed when Poppy had left him. This time he found it, but when he reached it and discovered she was not there, his desperation returned. Where is she? he muttered. Why did she leave me? What kind of friend is she anyway? Doesn't she know I, I need her? She should be here helping me. With that, Aerith wheeled about and trundled down the path he had seen Poppy take. As he came down off the crest of the ridge, he saw no sign of Poppy, only the pond where beavers were hard at work. Aerith stared bayfully at the beavers. They seemed to be working nicely together. At least they were smiling at one another. Ugh, family! He snarled with contempt. A happy family! Oh, crabgrass up their snoots! Aerith snapped. I'm going back to Dimwood Forest. And with that, he turned, galloped up the hill, and plunged among the trees again, quickly passing through them. The next moment, he burst into an open area. Before him lay a sunken meadow filled with berry brambles and flowering vines. Paying no particular mind to where he was going, Aerith hurled himself into the most clotted part of the thicket. It was a wild jumble, with plants growing so closely together he had to push and shove his way through the tangle of bushes. He was close to the middle when he for was forced to stop. He could not move. His quills caught in brambles and vines held him fast. He was stuck. Though he could not move, an exhausted Aerith was glad for the rest, glad for the quiet, glad he could not go anywhere. Ugh, I'll stay here forever, he sighed, until I die. It's better that way, and it won't be long either. Poppy was right. I'm old, very old. He closed his eyes and thought of home. He thought of Poppy. Momentarily, his anger rekindled. Then, grudgingly, he admitted to himself that it was he who had told her to go off by herself. Maybe her leaving him was, a little bit, his fault. He sighed. The more he thought about her, the more he missed her. She was always so good-natured, kind, and brave. His best friend, perhaps. He should find a way to tell her that. Someday. With a shake of his head, he muttered, Mo oh, pickle puke! And decided it would be better not to tell her anything. It wouldn't do. She might make fun of him, tease him, call him that horrid word, old, again. Still, he might find her a seed or two. He could leave them where she might find them, as if by accident, nothing more than that. If a porcupine didn't remain prickly, what could he be? Nothing. Aerith settled down, relieved that, he was, that it was impossible for him to do anything but stay stuck. It was better that way, much better. He didn't have to think or feel anything. He would just die. That, he thought, will show her. And that is the end of chapter 14.